guys, this is the second time I'm filming this because Manny is all up in my business. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's because I've just sprayed some perfume on me or what, but he wants to be up here and seeing everything I'm talking about. It's the dog. You can maybe hear him in the background. Um, this is why I don't film downstairs very much anymore. Someone asked recently about the background and why it's not so kind of constant. Most of the time I do film in my bedroom these days because it's just easier. Um, but <laughs> it's not so easy to film downstairs because there's always someone noisy in this room. If it's not one of the kids, it's now the dog who even makes noise when he sleeps because he's a pug cross with a Frenchie so he kind of snores all the time. Um, so yeah, that's why. I'm filming downstairs today for those of you that uh, prefer a, a nicer background and a bit lighter picture, but that's why I don't film so often. Um, so today's video is going to be a slightly different currently loving, it's going to be current hits and misses. And let me know how you feel about the format of that, because um, I think I'm going to prefer it moving forward. I like to do disappointing products videos, but it's hard to remember what was disappointing like over a period of time. And I don't tend to keep them all together, because I end up, if I keep anything in a basket, anything, anything kind of... I can't remember why it's in the basket and then I end up just putting things away. So I'd rather just show you them as they disappoint me and then I'll remember, it'll be fresh in my mind. Um, so it's gonna be hits and misses of kind of right now. Um, and the first big hit is this Instax camera. It's the Instax Mini 8. This was one of my birthday presents, another thing. If you wanna see a birthday haul, let me know. Um, this was one of my birthday presents from Emma, it's M channel here on YouTube. And I absolutely love it. It's something that I wanted to buy for myself so many times, but it's such an indulgence because it's so, I want to say it's impractical, but it's not impractical. It's just expensive for what it is. It's expensive for the camera. It's expensive for the film. We all have camera phones now. It's not a necessary purchase. It's definitely a luxury. And so it was something that I just never ended up buying for myself. So I'm so happy I have it. We used it a lot whilst we were away in New York. And since then on evenings out and stuff um, with the girls, I've used it. And I'm going to definitely take this with us when we go on holiday to Disneyland in May. I can't even wait to take pictures there with it. It's so cool to have just from, from going from such a digital age um, to going to candid shops that you, that's the picture you get, you don't have a do-over. Um, you can't pick, you can't take a million different pictures. Um, it's really cool. And I've actually taken selfies on this now. I'm so impressed with how easy it is. Some people said, oh, you know, it's so difficult to take selfies because you don't know what you're taking a picture of. But I grew up in the age of no camera phones. I, on Time Hop the other day, threw up a picture of me and my friend. Um, and I put them together, like a then and now collage thing. And afterwards I thought, that's even more impressive because there was no mirror, there's no camera on the front of that camera. It was just a, we took it with an actual camera and we didn't know we were in the shot. So every picture I've taken with that so far, um, kind of front facing camera without knowing what's in it, everything's turned out really well and framed perfectly. So I'm so impressed and don't let that put you off if that's something that you've heard that maybe is difficult because everything that I've found with it is great so far. Um, and the other two things on the kind of scrapbooky kind of tangent, um, I have my Erin Condren Live Planner, which I've spoken about on my other channel. I do have planner videos. I've spoken about stickers and hauls and all that kind of stuff. So you're into planner stuff, check out my diary of the Spendaholic channel below. Uh, but I'm absolutely loving this. And for those of you that think that it's a complete waste of money and it's so, so expensive as a planner, I would 100% agree. If you're looking for a diary or kind of a date book, it's the most expensive huge waste of money ever. I would not recommend this if you are just wanting something to kind of jot things in, you know, doing this or doing that. Um, it's very, very expensive. In the UK it is because of the shipping and potential customs. Um, it's very expensive to do it that way, but I'm using it more as um, a scrapbook. And this is kind of like a glorified colouring book for me because I'm, I'm sticking things in and organising things in advance. And I mean, I am using it to organise my list maker. So I'm using it to organise myself um, for YouTube and just kind of make lists of things that I'd like to get done in that week and on that day and whatever else. But it's not really a planner for me. I mean, for example, this was one week. It's just a sticker book. It's it's no different to people that sit and colour in. Um, I've started, I've got a little Polaroid Zip printer camera that perfectly fits um, with these boxes for the Erin Condren planner. So I've been putting stickers in there, um, but they are actually like photo paper stickers, which is great. So I'm using this definitely more as a, a scrapbook than I am than anything else. And I'm really, really happy with it. I love it so much. I, I mean, for example, this was when we went to New York and then I stuck in um, a little thing there and put extra bits in it. It's, it is, that's how I'm using it. I think it's called scrap planning. Um, but it's no good for me when I'm actually, like I, I'm definitely missing having a real life actual planner, like a, an actual date book. So what I bought this week was this from um, Personal Planner. I've always had a Personal Planner notebook for the past few years, the bigger size of this, 
um, and I replaced it with my own Condren thinking it would do the job of everything, but it's not really easy, it's not convenient to keep with me, and the whole point of having my personal planner was wherever I was, if someone said, you know, are you busy on this day, or can you do this, or can you do that, I could pull out my planner and I knew exactly what I was doing on every day. So I've definitely missed having that. So I bought the smaller size of the planner, and I will do a comparison of them soon, because I now have the um, this size, the square size, and the medium size, that I can show you what they're all like and compare them and all that. Um, I would say if you're like someone that is a list maker and someone that likes space to write, you probably would like the size up from this. Um, this is not excellent for that, but just something to have with you is really brilliant and you can have all the different dates put in there all automatically, like for example, my brother's birthday should be in here. There we go. So my brother's birthday is in there and it's got like a little balloon next to his um, name and says how old he's going to be. It's a very, very useful thing and if you are looking for uh, something that you can customise because I chose the cover and everything myself and the back, it's all watercolour as well. I just found those pictures online and it uploaded them. If you're looking for something that you can customise but isn't absolutely the most expensive thing ever, I would highly recommend Personal Planner. So they are my kind of non-beauty favourites of the moment. Um, next, I've been into nails recently and my nails have been horrendously dry. My cuticles have been really dry. I mean, my, even my nails are quite chipped right now. Um, but I've been really into trying to get them into good shape. Um, I wanted to go for a manicure. I went for a manicure in New York and I was totally converted. The stuff she did to my cuticles was like amazing. Um, and I want to be able to replicate that at home. So I've been trying lots of different things. And I've come back to my old faithful peppermint intensive foot rescue from the body shop. It is a nice foot balm or foot cream or whatever, but this on my cuticles is the most amazing thing. It's the most hydrating treatment you can ever, ever use. And if you use it that way, it is so cost effective. I would highly, highly recommend this if you've got very dry cuticles or dry hands at all. Um, and the other thing is this nail polish and it is Birthday Suit from Essie. I've been really into these kind of nude shades recently and part of the reason that I've really liked these is when they do chip, because these are chipped right now, when they do chip it's not super obvious. They still look quite polished and nice. I always look like... Uh, uh, they still look quite polished and nice, apart from the big scratch I've got on my finger. Um, but you can't tell so much when they're chipped. I hate the look of chipped nail polish. Uh, so this has been a nice little alternative for me recently. I've really enjoyed that. And lots of people have asked what I've got on my nail, which I've been surprised about because it looks like nothing. Um, but obviously, I think it must be quite trendy right now to have that kind of nude nail because so many people have asked about it. Something, I've got a couple of base products. Let's try and do this in order. A couple of base products. First is the Poor Professional Matte Rescue from Benefit. I'm not sure if this is out yet because they sent it to me two weeks ago. I'm assuming it is, but if not, it should be out soon. <laughs> um, this is a primer. And as you know, if you've watched me for a while, not big on primers, think generally they don't do anything for me, um, apart from maybe one or two. I know the Laura Mercier primer was amazing for helping my, my makeup stay on. Um, and there was a gosh, Prime and Perfect, or there's a powder primer from Gosh that was brilliant for keeping me matte but very, very drying. Well, this is kind of the best of both worlds. Um, this is nothing like any other primer that I've used um, for matte, like you know, mattifying skin. Much more like the Laura Mercier one, kind of a gel like texture, and it goes on and then it sets. And I much prefer that. I hate to have something that feels like I'm putting, you know, cream onto cream. You don't ever feel like you're. you're foundation is laying very nicely on top of like silicone ones and stuff like that. Not me anyway, I, that's what, what's always put me off, is I don't feel like it's kind of created anything. I feel like I'm moving things around on top of other things. Um, whereas this is like a gel. I, in fact, I'll show you what the texture is like because it's so unusual. It's like that, if you can see. Hang on. Woo! -hoo 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 -hoo, which finger? Um, it, it's like that. And then if you put it on your skin, it looks wet, but it sets completely. It's very thin, it's like water light. Um, and it doesn't feel like anything at all, but it definitely helps to keep me matte. I'm not wearing it today, because I'm actually testing out a foundation. It's fresh as well, I like that. Actually testing out a foundation today, it's the Rimmel Stay Matte. So there will be a video on that very, very soon. The three Rimmel foundations I'm testing out for you, and this is the first one. Um, but when I have used it, I've seen a massive improvement in um, matte, mattifying. Why can't I think of the words? Oil control. <laughs> Massive improvement in oil control would be better. So if you're very oily, I would recommend you give that a go. At some point, they're bound to put this in a magazine as a sample. Try it, see if you like it, but that, I'm not someone that recommends primers. I'm not a primer kind of person, and, and that I feel like is actually worth trying. Um, and the other thing is the NARS Creamy, the Radiant Creamy Concealer. The colour I have is Light 2, which is vanilla, 
and I wish I didn't love this, it's so expensive um, for a concealer. I don't like to spend a tremendous amount of money on cosmetics, you know, I'm not averse to spending money on things quite like a splurge from time to time, but I like to spend money on like lipstick when it comes to makeup, lipstick or maybe blush or cheek products, things that are going to last a while. I don't like to spend money on base products unless I absolutely have to. My Estee Lauder Double Wear is my holy grail, but it lasts a really long time the way that I use it, and now the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer could be up there in the concealer stakes. I've just been looking for a concealer that will do something different for me for what feels like years. Um, as my skin is aging, I'm looking for different kind of products, the products that we're using that were working for me before, aren't working for me anymore, and I thought when we were in the States, I thought it's gonna be slightly cheaper here, I'll pick it up, and I absolutely love it. So, so much coverage, but it doesn't feel heavy, it doesn't kind of crepe or settle into anything, I just love it so much, and I totally see why everyone hypes it up, because it's amazing. So if you were thinking about maybe getting it, I know some people when I hauled it said, that's kind of the straw that broke the camel's back, who we were waiting to see what I thought about it if I ever reviewed it, and I really, really like it. Um, so I'm, I'm sorry, I know they were expensive, but I can't not love them. Uh, something back on the budget end of things is the Lash Sensational from Maybelline. I mention this from time to time, I mention it in almost every Get Ready With Me. It's still my favourite, I felt like I had to mention it again. It is just the best mascara I've ever used. It's been definitely over a year now, more than a year, um, that this has been my go-to. And I've tried loads of different mascaras in that time, high end and low end, and this has not been topped yet. I just, still my absolute favourite. Um, I have two eyeliners here. Both of them are kind of favourites, but also have their downsides as well. Uh, the Kat Von D Tattoo Liner is what I have on right now. It says, it's a waterproof liquid eyeliner. The colour is Trooper, but it's just basically black. Um, I really like this, but it's not, I, I feel like it doesn't last on me. To say that it's supposed to be waterproof, and I don't have particularly oily lids, I don't have that issue with any other eyeliner, I feel like it wears away and it doesn't, maybe it does crumble, it just wears in a really strange way. I absolutely love the way that it applies, but it just doesn't look super black, it looks odd. A couple of hours into wearing it, it looks like, not like it's fading, but it doesn't look like it's lasting all that well. So when I get to the end of this, we shall see if this becomes a disappointing product. Right now, when I first put it on, it is the nicest, nicest liquid eyeliner I have ever used. The easiest to apply, a really, really fine tipped brush nib, so nice. But the way that it wears on me is really strange. So I'm gonna try it in a few different ways. I'm gonna try it with um, some primers underneath and stuff like that and see if it makes a difference. But right now, I really love it, but I also don't. It's kind of an in-between. And this is a lot like the Natural Collection one. I mentioned this in the Natural Collection Get Ready With Me, um, and I wanted to do a follow-up because it lasted so well. The brush isn't as fine. The brush could be a little bit better, but it was quite nice. I'm just comparing it to the Kat Von D, which is the best of the best, um, applicator-wise. But if the brush was anything like the Kat Von D one, this would win. Because the formula is, mm, it could be blacker, but you could apply more than one layer. But it lasted so well. I still managed to get everything, you know, do everything that I would normally do. Maybe not quite as fine a cat eye flick, but still, I managed to do everything that I would normally do with my normal liquid eyeliner. Um, and it was totally, and it says it's smudge resistant on here, and I would, I would agree. It lasted so, so well. So I would recommend this. I think it's $1.99, and it's two for three pounds at the moment, as it offer. Uh, but if you are looking for a budget liquid eyeliner, try this out, because I think that's amazing. For, especially for the money, but, you know, money aside, I've, I've spent more for, for not as good quality eyeliners than that. Um, I have two things that I'm kind of classing as fragrance. One of them is lip balm, so let's start with that one. Uh, the Sugar Fresh Lip Treatment. I've wanted to try this for ages. It's got sunscreen in it. Oh, it says that on the back. One thing I really like about it is all the sugar lip stuff screw out of the packaging. So it's not like, um, you don't get that satisfying click, which is kind of annoying, but it screws in, which means it's never gonna pop off in your handbag, which is amazing. Especially if you're spending a little bit more money on something, you don't wanna end up with it all over your bag, one, because your bag will be kind of a mess, but also you don't wanna wreck the product. Um, and sugar lip treatments and lip tints and all that aren't super cheap. But the reason that I'm mentioning this in a fragrance category is it smells exactly like the brown sugar perfume that I absolutely love. I wanna put this on so bad right now, but I'm also doing um, a lipstick <laughs> comparison and review day test. I have lots of new videos in pipeline right now, uh, so I can't put it on, but it smells so good. 
It's a nice lip balm. Um, I haven't had it long enough to say, wow, it's doing amazing things with my lips. I don't feel like in the morning, I'm like, ooh, but it smells so freaking good. If you like the brown sugar perfume, I would highly recommend this because I think you'll just love it because of the fragrance alone. Um, and the Jo Malone Pomegranate Noir has been my, in fact, I'm just gonna put a little bit more on. I know I don't need to, but I'm going to. Um, it's been my fragrance of choice recently. My friend Kaz got me little mini sizes of tester kind of, I don't know, fragrance combining set for Christmas and Pomegranate Noir was in there and I loved it so much and then Zoe, this is like a spoiler for my for my birthday haul if I do one, Zoe from Mama Full Zoe um, sent me a full size which is amazing, she sent me the most amazing birthday present, I was like totally overwhelmed because um, she totally didn't need to do that at all but she sent it to me and it was a lovely gift and one of the things that she sent me was this, I love this so much, so much. And it's something that I wanted to get for a while, but I was a bit nervous because I've purchased Jo Malone perfumes in the past and then ended up not buying, not buying them, not using them because I didn't like them as much when I got them home. But this, I could definitely have just bitten the bullet and bought this because I love it so much. Misses. First of all, this is so weird. It's the Evelon Morning Time Cleanser. Uh, I haven't tried the evening one yet, but I got this in a beauty box a while ago. Um, and so I decided to use it this month. So bad. I can't get over how bad it smells. And then I need to just squeeze a little bit out. Oh my God, like what does it even smell of? Can you please, if you like this, I need to know if you like this. I don't know what it has in it. I can't see anything. Maybe it's like lilin. Can't see anything in the um, ingredients that would smell like, I just don't understand, it smells so bad. If you guys have ever been to the Jorvik Center, it smells exactly like the Jorvik Center. It smells like, and I mean, that's not a good smell. <laughs> it smells, it smells like an artificial smell that has been put into um, like a, a museum-y place that's all about Vikings. So if you can kind of imagine what that might be, it's so bad, I don't know what it smells of but it doesn't smell good and I don't know why they would make it smell like that. I don't know if, if I've got one that's bad, please tell me if you have tried this and like it and if, especially if you like the, the fragrance and if you don't like the fragrance, please tell me as well because I want to know it's just not just me. Yves Lom is a big brand. People rave about Yves Lom. I thought I was going to love this. Not so much. And I'm, I, the product was fine but there's no way I'm ever putting that back on my face because it smells gross. Um, natural Collection. This is the creamy cover-up. I think it was called Cover-Up Cream. Uh, this is basically their liquid concealer. Terrible, don't even waste your money. There is, there are other things um, for a similar price point. This is 199, but you can get other things. I mean, for a little bit more, you could get the um, collection, Lasting Perfection Concealer, which is great. This is just terrible. Didn't do anything at all, no coverage. Um, and if anything, it just added like weight to my foundation, but it didn't make it look any, I just, just a fail. Do not recommend. And lastly, a major disappointing fail was the Estee Lauder, what is this called specifically? I think it's called Compact Double Wear. It doesn't say, it just says Double Wear on the bottom. Um, and the shade I have is Cool Bone. So I got this for our trip to New York. And, oh, I know, that's why I ended up getting the NARS Creamy Concealer because I was so disappointed with the foundation I'd taken um, and the concealer just wasn't combating it. So I needed something a bit more high coverage and decided to get this because this was so terrible. This was bad, man. I really wanted this to be amazing. I love my double wear light. I love my original double wear. The double wear concealer is good. I might try the powder as well soon. Um, in fact, I will definitely try the powder and then I'm gonna do a video on the different foundation products and base products available because I really wanna do a full kind of range video. I think they may maybe do a BB cream as well. Um, but this was so bad. The, the concept is really cool, right? It has the sponge inside. So this is what you're looking at when you open up the thing. A nice big mirror, I mean it's quite a big compact, but a nice big mirror um, and then you get your sponge and you push this and it gives you like one small amount of foundation. I don't know if you can see that. Like a, come on focus, there you go. So it gives you a dose of foundation, which you would then put on there and touch up with. Now, the woman that sold it to me, I went in specifically for it, so she didn't sell it to me, it's not her fault. I went in specifically to buy it. Um, and she didn't know a tremendous amount about it yet because it was quite new. But she told me that the people that had come back and the people that were buying it so far had told her it seemed to work better as something to touch up on the go. So for someone that likes really, really heavy foundation um, or just a very high coverage 
full foundation. You might really like this as your touch up throughout the day. But if you're looking for something that's going to basically be double wear in a compact, more travel friendly form, this is not the same product at all. It had a very different texture to it. It was almost sticky. It just wasn't the same thing. I was massively, massively disappointed and it's not obvious that that's what it is. They're saying it's a double wear compact. I thought it was gonna be the same formula and it's totally not. Um, and she did kind of warn me when I bought it that it might not be the same, but I wanted to see for myself uh, and it's not, it's just not. Now I know that other people have raved about this. I know that someone that I follow on Instagram, she really enjoys it and she said it was like a holy grail and she was trying to make it last as long as possible because she didn't want to run out. And I don't understand because it's just not, I, I hate it so much. Um, that I won't be using it, but I just wanted to kind of get it out there because I've raved and raved about the regular double wear If you see that and you think maybe that's a thing that you want to try It's not the same thing. So if you like that you might not like regular double wear and vice versa. So that is it um, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've enjoyed that kind of format it's like change up with doing some disappointing products in there as well um, But I feel like it's been a long one. So I'm gonna wrap this up and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye